Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Modern Mining. Today, I'm gonna show you five HiveOS settings that you need to change the moment that you get your rig turned on. So what I'm doing right here is actually flashing a HiveOS drive for a client rig. You're gonna see the rig build in a few weeks probably. But what I'm doing here is putting HiveOS onto the SSD on the rig and then I'm gonna run it a few days, make sure everything's stable, and then I'm going to hook it up to his farm. But there's a few changes in HiveOS that I recommend that everybody does. Some of them include auto fan, hash rate watchdog. So stay tuned, I'll tell you what all these settings are that you need to change the minute you set up a new HiveOS rig. Today's video is sponsored by Via BTC, a trusted mining pool for some of the biggest proof of work cryptos. Via BTC offers mining pools for Bitcoin, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, and even Caspa. When you mine on Via BTC, enjoy hourly profit settlements, auto withdrawal settings, and even the ability to exchange between coins directly in their interface to save time and money. Auto withdrawals can be set up for any address or directly to the Coinex exchange. Via BTC is the largest pool for Bitcoin Cash while coming in third for the big dog Bitcoin. This highlights the reliability and robust mining power that Via BTC offers. Check out the link down below to get 50% off your pool fees for the next 30 days. So it looks like this is done flashing. Now my only next step is now that I have this mining rig, I'm just going to go into settings here and take the rig.config file right here and put that onto the SSD drive. And then from there, I'm ready to start messing with my HiveOS settings and my GPU rig will pop right up. So since it's done flashing, I'm just gonna unplug it and plug it back in and hopefully it pops right up and it did. And this is where we're gonna now take our rig.config file, copy that, and then go back to our Hive drive, paste that in, rename it so it doesn't have that 23 in there and boom okay so let me go plug this into the gpu mining rig and we will get into the hive os setup all right we got the new ssd plugged into the mining rig here's a look at it it's a six card 3060 ti rig i've got all three power supplies plugged into a high power trip light pdu and we will go ahead and turn this bad boy on i might need to flip the power supply and I'll meet you guys back in HiveOS and we will start setting up the HiveOS settings that you need to set for all of your mining rigs. All right, guys, you can see that our mining rig popped up. We can see all six GPUs, so that's good. That means the HiveOS flash worked good and now our rig is showing up, which is what we expect. So now let's get into the tips. The first one is gonna be incredibly easy, but for the beginners, it's probably the most important one. And it's just overclocking your graphics cards or technically underclocking them. Overclocking your GPUs is beneficial because one, you're gonna be protecting the cards, they're gonna be running cooler. And two, you're gonna be getting more hash rate for less wattage, which means you're gonna be making more profit because you're getting more coin for less electricity. So how do you even overclock a GPU mining rig? Well, if you go into here, I've already made a flight sheet, which is basically what tells the mining rig what coin to mine. And if you don't know how to do this, I've already got a 40 minute guide on how to do all the software for GPU mining. So check out this video, but I've already got a flight sheet made here and it doesn't have any overclocks in it. So if you were to run this right now, it would be somewhat dangerous because you're running your cards at basically max speed. You're using a lot of power and they're gonna have a decently high hash rate, but they're gonna be using a ton of power. So let's go in here and hit edit and then set up minor config. And this is where we're gonna paste our overclocking values. And don't be scared, it's super easy to get these overclocking values. You just want to go to hashrate.no, which is an overclocking website. And then you want to go to GPUs, type in the GPU that you want to overclock, 3060 Ti in this case, and then select the coin. We're going to be mining Zealous. And then you minor options for Regal. You just go ahead and copy these and paste them in here. And just like that, your miners will now be overclocked the second you start your flight sheet. 
So let's go ahead and hit this rocket button and that's going to apply the flight sheet and in a couple seconds this rig should start mining and it's going to be nice and underclocked slash overclocked and going to be running at decent temperatures. One last thing I want to mention about overclocks is there used to be a glitch in HiveOS where if you restarted your rig that your overclocks were not applying. So let's go ahead and do shutdown and boot in 30 seconds from this power button. And we want to make sure that our cards are still pouring about 85 to 90 watts when this reboots. Because if not, I'll go ahead and tell you the fix in case you are having that issue because I was having it on a lot of my rigs is you need to update your kernel in HiveOS. And to do that, you're gonna have to go into remote access right here and do a Hive Shell start. I'm not gonna be able to do it because I just rebooted the rig, so we'll wait one second and then I'll show you what you do once you go into the Hive Shell. All right, so the rig rebooted and we don't have that issue, but like I was saying, if you do have that issue, you wanna go into Hive Shell start then you want to click on this hive shell right here and it's going to take you into basically a shell of your mining rig and then it's super easy you just type hive dash replace dash y dash s and this is going to update the kernel of your hive os and once it's on the latest kernel you will no longer have that issue so that's something to check with your overclocks. So you can see we're up and running 180 kilohash and 727 watts, but this is where tip number two comes in, that you can't really trust the wattage numbers in HiveOS. It has a decent estimate, but it's not accurate. So I just went downstairs and I plugged in a power meter to this rig to see how many watts it's actually pulling from the wall. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's one of these devices. I'll have links down below to Amazon to buy one of these, but it basically tells you the exact amount of watts that your rig is actually using. And in our case, this six card rig is actually using 845 watts. So it's pretty different than this right here. So it doesn't do us a lot of good if this wattage number on here is just totally inaccurate. But luckily there's a way to fix that. So if you go into settings and you scroll down here, there's gonna be a power supply efficiency right here. And this is where you can adjust the efficiency of your power supplies to get that Hive OS wattage number to match the real world. So let's go ahead and just set this to 90% and see what that changes our wattage to. So 827, already pretty close. Let's change that back to maybe 89 and that might do it. Uh, we gotta go down probably to 87. Oh, 88, all over the place here. Okay, now we're at 850, that's about as close as you can get it. So now our Hive OS is actually at least matching what it's using at the wall. All right, you'll notice our wattage is down to 591 now, and that's actually because I switched the overclocks. So if you're gonna actually use the overclocks from this video, these are the ones you want to use. They use much less power. But regardless, we are still equal to the power at the wall because we set our efficiency value to that 88%. And now if we go to our farm, this 600 watts right here should show our accurate daily cost, but you can see it still says $0. So there's one other thing we need to set here and that's into the settings of the farm itself. And we can go in here and we need to set our electricity price. So this is 0.11 for 11 cent power. That's what I have. So I'll save that. And I'm gonna put US dollars in here. I haven't done this before, so that may change things. I'm probably need to check this on my own farm, honestly, because I hope it's not defaulting to euros. Um, uh, I think it looks like it was, it is doing dollars, but oh well, regardless, put USD there. And then now when you go back to your farm, you can hover over and see the exact power cost of your rig every single day. So this is a good trick because it allows you to basically get the exact cost of your rigs without having to check them at the wall all through software. And you can see right here on your farm how much money you're spending in electricity every single day. So next, let's talk about the hash rate watchdog. This is a feature that allows you to ensure maximum uptime on your GPUs. 
if one crashes right when you go to sleep, your rig is not going to mine with five cards instead of six the whole time you're asleep. And that way you're always getting the most hash rate out of your rig. So go to hash rate watchdog right here. It's this dog icon. We're going to flick that to on. And the first thing you want to change is reboot if LA is greater than, let's say 14. LA stands for load average of your CPU. You likely shouldn't be getting load average crashes, but this is going to make it so that before your rig just stays off all night long, that it's going to reboot and keep mining. So this one's not as important, but I like to set it. The next thing is going to be watchdog mode. We're going to set it to algos. And then for zealous hash v2, you can see we're mining 147 kilohash. So switch the hash to kilohash. And you want to put this one card less than the than your value right here. So let's set this to basically 137. And what this means is that if one of our cards dies or drops off, we're going to lose 24 kilohash and we're going to be at about 123 kilohash which is below our 137 threshold. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna restart the rig after three minutes. So that card doesn't stay dead the entire night. It automatically boots back up and revives that card and it can keep mining. So that's the hash rate watchdog. The next very important setting you wanna set is auto fan. I used to not be a big fan of auto fan, but it definitely is very helpful in protecting your cards from potentially getting damaged and making sure that your fans on your GPUs are always running at the correct speeds. So auto fan is right next to the hash rate watchdog here. And we can set our critical temperature, which is basically what temperature does the GPU have to get the core of the GPU before the miner shuts off to basically protect your hardware. And 90 is pretty dang high for the default setting. So I actually like to set this to 80 because if your GPU cores are getting to 80, then you have some issues that you need to figure out. You either need to change the thermal paste or you need to get a better mining setup where the ambient air is less hot. So we'll set that to 80 and very important, you wanna set this to shut down because if you set it to stop the miner or reboot, maybe not stop the miner, but definitely reboot, it's just gonna keep rebooting. That card is gonna to go to 80 reboot that card is going to go to 80 and it's going to continue doing that and that may be more damaging to the card than just going to 80 one time so i like to just straight up shut down the rig next thing you want to set your fan to auto and this is going to basically automatically set the fan speed of your gpus and i like to do the minimum fan speed of 45 maximum of 100 and target a core temperature of about 60 degrees and 95 degrees is fine on the memory temp. So we'll save that setting. And now we've got hash rate watchdog and auto fan settings accomplished along with overclocking. So this rig is already a lot safer than it was when we first set it up. Last but not least, this isn't necessarily a Hive OS feature, but it will increase your mining profits. And that is be sure that you're mining to the pool with the lowest ping. There's some other factors that go into it, but the mining pool that has the lowest ping will generally be the most profitable. And there's an awesome tool to do this. It's on GitHub and I'll have it linked down below. It's this two miners stratum slash ping tool. And this is very helpful to actually check the ping of a couple different mining pools. So we're currently mining to Viper pool on this rig, but let's compare that to hero miners and see which one is actually better. So once you download that ping tool, it's gonna to be in a folder like this with basically an executable and then a bat file that you can edit and you're, all you're gonna do is put into here the address of the pool that you wanna check. So let's pull up Zealous on Viper Pool and we can see the stratums and stuff right here. And then we also need to do that for Hero Miners. And we'll get the addresses and then we will test them each. So for me, USA East is gonna be the closest. So let's first test Hero Miners. It's just as simple as going back into our bat file and placing that in there and then saving it and then running that executable right here. 
and we can see that our ping on the hero miners pool is about 50 and it'll give you your average 48.85 so that's pretty good let's check out the viper.net one now okay let's take this um, right here us viper.net 5077 let's put that in here save it and then we will run that one and compare and it looks like we are getting 30 ish milliseconds so viper pool at least in my area is probably the pool that you should be mining on and this client is in a similar area so i'm going to leave it on viper pool so those are the main hive os tips and tricks that you guys should use when you're setting up a mining rig right off the bat it's going to be a lot more stable a lot more safe and a lot more profitable so i'll see you guys next time check out some of my other videos and be sure to hit that like and subscribe button on the way out see you guys next time peace Thank you